Hello and welcome to the Watch Kaki channel where we bring you all the good and honest watch reviews. If you haven't done so, please click the subscribe button and come back here every week because I've got new videos uploaded every week just for you. Today's video is titled A Tale of Three Tunas. So as the title suggests, we are looking at three different types of tuna style divers and we have two from Seiko. I've got the SVBN 031 that I reviewed last week. I've got the solar tuner which is the SNE498 and finally I've got a homage all right this is the homage of the Seiko tuner you can see that they look alike all right so many people uh, you know they condemn this to be a copy but this is a homage and this is the San Martin automatic tuner so the idea behind today's video is not to do a shootout or a comparison video like I've done before but uh, this is more or less a show and tell because I happen to hold on to these three watches at the same time. Uh, these two, they belong to me, the Solar Tuna and the San Martin. And this one here is a loan set from my buddy. So uh, it's a good video to show you the differences and uh, my feelings towards these watches. So first off, I'm going to do uh, an introduction of the, each of the watch. And this is the, the first one I'm going to talk about. This is the high-end Seiko Marine Master Professional Tuna, all right. So it's a high-end. I would say it's a mid to high-end Seiko. Uh, it's got a high-end quartz movement. It's powered by the 7C46 movement, high torque, high precision, and you know, it comes with lots of uh, high-end specs such as titanium clasp on the uh, bracelet, and it's coated with die shield. And I think this is as uh, just as about as robust as you can go for a dive watch. And the next tuna we're going to look at is more or less a budget entry level kind of tuna. So this one here is a solar movement and the movement here is V157. It is a solar quartz and this is like the entry level and usually it goes for about $300 to $350 uh, street price. And finally we have this homage watch here from St. Martin. Now they've been rolling out some very good watches and this one here is no exception. It's really well made. In fact, the specs here, I would say is pretty impressive. Uh, it's got automatic movement uh, and sapphire crystal, fully loomed bezel. And I'm actually quite surprised that they do have Marine Master printed on the dial. It's pretty amazing. I'm sure many diehard Seiko fans are not too happy about this. So let's just talk a bit about the dimensions. Uh, these two tuners, uh, the Seiko SBBN 031 and the St. Martin Marine Master copy or homage. I think they are, uh, you know, more or less the same in terms of size. They both have a case size of about 47.5 millimeters. Case thickness, overall thickness is also identical, 15.5 or 15.6 give and take. Uh, everything else is about the same. Uh, whereas the smaller one here, the solar tuner, this one here just comes in at under 47 millimeters. I measured with my digital calipers, I think it's 46.7 and it's got a thickness of only 12 millimeters. All right, and makes it very comfortable to wear. And the solar tuner is also the lightest among the three tuners on show today. It weighs at about 95 grams. Uh, on my digital scale and this makes it so comfortable to wear it feels like you're wearing a G-Shock but you know you still have the looks of a Seiko tuner and then we've got the SBBN 031 which comes in at about 125 grams on a Seiko rubber strap now I pop this over from a Seiko Samurai I've got the uh, SRPB 53 and uh, these days that one is on a bracelet so I you know have a spare Seiko strap lying around and I really think that you know the Seiko rubber strap fits the 031 the best so for the sake of uh, uniformity I've decided to you know mount this one on the rubber so that uh, when we do the video you know it all looks good and you know we don't talk about the titanium class on the bracelet at all and lastly we've got this one this is really a piece of a watch you know it's a chunky watch and it comes in at about 141 grams and I would think it's mostly uh, due to the fact that it's got a 
mechanical movement because the other two watches uh, they are quartz powered and this one here is mechanical and uh, I think that could contribute to the reason why it is so heavy. So in terms of wearability, I think all these tuners, they have one thing in common, they have very short lug-to-lug uh, -lug distance. So this one here, the two biggest tuners I've got, they have the same, you no know, more or less the same uh, case size. So the lug-to-lug -lug is only 44.5. So, you know, you've got a case size of 47.5, but uh, when we measure the lug-to-lug, -lug, it's only 47.5. Thereby makes it very easy to wear. You don't get much of lug overhang. So over here at the wrist shot, you can see that, you know, it's still very manageable. It's a big watch, heavy, uh, with a good rubber strap, it doesn't feel uh, too top heavy because it doesn't uh, move around much. And it's the same for the SBBN 031. Right, I'm going to just quickly strap it on. It's not easy because uh, the tripod is in the way. So I'm going to just bring it in to wear it first. All right, here you can see the fit is almost the same as the San Martin, uh, very manageable, even though you know these watches are on the bigger side of things. And lastly, we have the solar tuner, which really gets a lot of uh, bad reviews because of the plastic components. But I dare say this is the most comfortable among the three because it's so light, it's so thin, right? Doesn't feel like you're wearing one of those chunky watches. Really feels good and I have no complaints at all even though you've got plastic components in the build. So let's go on and talk about the case construction and the build quality of these watches, all right? Well, there's no doubt, no doubt at all that the SBBN 031 is the star of the show here when it comes to build quality. I mean, this is all the premium uh, materials and construction, all right? It doesn't have sapphire crystal, it's got a hard legs, got a dome hard legs, but you know, uh, it is probably uh, enough uh, for your diving needs and I'm very impressed that Seiko has included the uh, die shield coating here so let's just do a quick comparison I usually get the feeling that uh, die shield actually changes the uh, color of the metal a little bit all right so you don't see much of it here so coming back to the casework of the SBBN 031 I love you know the finishing here at the bezel or at the shroud just you know, take a look at that really nice rounded off edge here, right? It's got a chamfering here, also at the base of the case. So it's really nice, well executed here, all rounded and smooth. On the other hand, uh, let's do a, you know, side by side with the uh, San Martin. So over here, it is rounded, very nice. And on the San Martin, Right. I'm not saying it's cutting my hand, it, it doesn't. All right. It's well done, but there is still a hard edge here. All right. The edge here is still hard. It is not rounded or chamfered. Okay. Now, there's a bit of beveling here at the base of the shroud. Okay. It's not bad. I give you that. But uh, overall, you will find more hard edges here. All right. Nothing so sharp that you will cut your hand, but uh, there are hard edges. And lastly, we come to the uh, solar tuner. Well, this one here usually gets a lot of flack uh, from Seiko fans because they've decided to use a plastic shroud here. But uh, I seriously don't see that as a problem. In fact, I, I think it is a great move by Seiko because it makes the watch very light. And overall, the case construction, uh, you will know uh, the finishing and the materials used is indeed uh, one or two notches below, namely, the crown here, uh, the coating here, you know, it doesn't look so refined, you know, the color, the, the sheen over here, it doesn't look very refined. And now let's go on and talk about the dial design of each of the watches here. Uh, this one here actually feels most uh, closely inspired from those vintage uh, style of tuners you can see from the hands here and the color uh, scheme, the, the two-tone color scheme and this type of you know, vintage style kind of hands. Uh, whereas the SBBN 031 is more modern, the hands look more modern. Both these watches, if I'm not wrong, they've got painted indices, okay? They are not applied, they're painted. And, you know, surprise, surprise, the San Martin comes with applied indices, really nicely done, all right? They're applied and 
they can stand up to macro shots all right I'm, I'm not i'm not lying to you on this one i've done macro shots on the st martin here the indices are nicely applied as is the st martin logo all right so comparing this one here you've got nice applied indices and the seikos they have painted indices so i've just zoomed in a little bit and now it's time to do a quick uh, loom comparison so i'm gonna switch off the lights and let's see how these watches do in the dark and boom all right so again there's no doubt that the sbbn 031 is the brightest is the one right in the middle and surprise surprise the solar tuna does have a really nice uh, loom bezel from 0 to 15 all right the countdown bezel and the san martin probably the weakest loom among the, among the three uh, does have a slightly different color i think it's uh, obviously a different type of loom application and it does have a fully loom bezel all right so again you know one look you know who is the champion here in terms of loom like i said the 031 is you know professional specs tool watch so you're not gonna mess with it so uh, switching on the studio lights again we're gonna round up this show and tell video uh, by just quickly talking a bit more about each of the watch and here uh, the solar tuner here it's obviously you know entry level and I, I really want to tell the fans out there you know do not be afraid that it uses a plastic shroud all right not a problem at all in fact uh, I would say it's a plus point makes the watch so light so nice to wear this one gets a lot of wrist time all right compared to say a turtle or samurai those things they sit in the watch box because sometimes they can get a bit too cumbersome to wear on the bracelets and this one here you know this is the big daddy cool all right this is the champion yeah you know you pay a lot of money for it all right it's not cheap i think it goes for about thousand four to thousand five hundred singapore dollars with the bracelet and you're really getting good materials a good watch overall all right uh it, it wouldn't be considered expensive at all for the quality that you're getting you know the movement is top-notch very accurate and there's so much tech going on into this watch all right dye shield coating mm, high grade movement a superb dive bracelet all right uh, which is not featured here of course they've got the titanium ratcheting clasp and, and all that all right and uh, i must tell you here the loom bib here is really nicely done ceramic uh, bezel insert as well so the other one here uh, it's a it's a bit different right it's not a seiko but you are also getting a lot of watch for the money all right this one here uh, typically goes for about 300 singapore dollars if i'm not wrong uh, us dollars about 220 to 240 so you can get this for about 300 or 300 uh, 20 singapore dollars very good quality watch all right do not shy away uh, because it's a homage you know it's a copy um, i would say that this one here is probably built uh, better than many entry level seikos all right after all uh, it uses a seiko movement and the build here is very very good uh, you're getting really good quality brushing here construction is good and i don't see anyone complaining about uh, the overall build quality of these watches right. so there is a tuna for everyone at every price point at every level all right if you're looking for a fast free entry level tuna and uh, this is the one you should go for the sne series they've got ton of colorways they've got paddy they've got uh, safety ocean they've got one that comes on a bracelet they've got one that looks like the 31 but of course uh, with lower specs it comes on a bracelet and a host of other street series solar tuners so if you're in the market for something that's affordable something that you can bang up without uh, feeling too much of a you know heart pain so this could be the one to look at now if you're looking for you know a collector's piece all right um, you want to get into the world of serious Seiko uh, high-end all right mid to high-end diver watch I think yeah, you would have no problems with this one uh, again it's a quartz movement but fear not all right this one here is high grade quartz it's not cheapo quartz um, you will be very happy with this one as well it really looks the part 
uh, I would say this is the quintessential Seiko diver. All right, you won't go wrong with this one. One look, all right, you know this is it. This is the SBBN something something. All right, uh, they've got a few other colorways and design uh, differences. I think they've got a 015 which is slightly older and comes with vintage hands. They've also got the 035 which is the all black and the 037 which is the blue version so uh, again a few other choices you can go for and i would say you know for the money you pay this is also a great seiko tuner and lastly we come to the san martin all right uh, this is like the you know distant relative or <laughs> the abandoned stepchild or something like that you know uh, it gets very little respect but uh, i'm telling you i like this one here uh, i also like the black dead wheel all right very well done Sambas blue dial you can't find uh, any seikos built this way with this quality in this price range all right and uh, it uses a seiko movement so <laughs> it is actually a half uh, bastardized seiko all right um, if that word is okay to be used on the channel so um, I'm very happy with these watches uh, the dome crystals on these two um, you know they, they give a bit of distortion I think this one here is a single dome because um, it distorts quite badly you know at some angles some of the indices look really weird so uh, in terms of crystal crystal choice uh, my vote goes to uh, the good old cheapo solar tuner I prefer flat crystals all right so uh, I really love these watches I think you know it's good to have a Seiko tuna style kind of diver in your watch collection so I hope you enjoyed my video my show and tell video of these three tuna style watches two from Seiko the original brand and this one here is the uh, wannabe <laughs> homage so we're gonna round off a tail of three tunas with this one here all right so get a tuna if you like it all right don't don't sit there and wait for too long because uh, the longer you wait uh, the less likely you're gonna click uh, the buy or add to cart button okay so 11 11 sale is coming it's just around the corner next week is 11 11 so uh, please you know feel free to add uh, these watches into your cart and press the checkout um, while your wife is not watching all right uh, if your wife comes chasing after you it's none of my business this is the watch kaki from singapore and this fella here he's been very quiet his name is george we're gonna see you next week bye bye